please let me know what you think about this. Okay. Black Americans who are conservative. Um, what are you trying to conserve? God, traditional family values, liberty, personal responsibility, hard work, discipline, freedom, and self-determination. Facts. That <laughs> brother hit everything that I would say. He hit the nail on the head. See, the thing is, is that I tell people all the time, we talk about this all the time. If you are a Christian, if you are a believer in the word of God, if you are a believer in the God of the Bible, liberalism and Christianity don't go together. They are antithetical to each other. You can't be. They can't go together. So if anytime I hear someone that says, I am a liberal, but I'm also a Christian, I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't believe you. Because those two things, they're antithetical to each other. You can't do it. Because the policies that they're for and the lifestyles that they're for, they're against what we believe in as Christians. And that's okay. We don't all have to agree. We don't have to. We let y'all do exactly what y'all want to do. That's facts. And, uh, you know, Charlie Kirk actually just now said this on a show on Twitter. And people have been giving them hell for it. Most conservatives are not giving them hell for it, but people were giving them hell for it. He was saying, if you're a liberal, you're not a Christian. You can't be. You can't. If you just look at the, look at the policies, look at what they believe in, and then you look at the Bible, and you look at the Word of God, and the principles there, they don't go hand in hand. Facts. Facts. And they're doing that all the time. It looks like it's an attack against God right now, but that's all in the Bible. Everything that's happening right now is in the Bible, is in Scripture. Absolutely. And if you know, you know. But you can't be afraid. You got to continue to fight against it. Anybody who loved the Lord out there, just continue to fight against it. Continue to pray against it. Continue to, to live and set an example. But everybody that's on the other side, they believe that it's just simply politics. It's not simply politics. It's bigger than that. It's way Every bigger than that. That's the problem, honestly, you, you know, when you look at the black community who historically has been, as far as the way we live, some of the most conservative people out there, when you start talking about the way we live, we've been some of the most religious people out there, uh, you know, especially, you know, those of us that grew up in the Southeast, I'd say from probably Delaware to Florida, from Florida over to Texas. Yeah. We're some of the most conservative Christian people in the country. Unfortunately, yeah. we've tried to separate our faith from our politics. And that's not how things are supposed to be, because the reality of it is, if you vote for it, that is your voice. That means that you condone it. That means that you stood up and said yes yeah. for whatever policy it is that the people that you voted for want to implement. People don't look at it that way, but that's really what it is, that your vote is basically we're all standing in a room and they say, hey, how do you feel about full term pregnancy terminations? Your vote, when you stand up and say yes... You're letting everybody know that you condone this. Yeah. Murder. The only difference is, is that you get, to, you get to do it undercover. You get to kind of check a box and then slide it and no one really needs to know about it. But God knows. God knows. And you're just doing it time after time after time. And Absolutely. also, also if, even if you're just sneaking and voting for it, you're loud when you say what you represent. The party you say you represent you're letting us know what you stand for and what you stand against. And what you stand against most times is just correction. What you, what you stand against is God's law yeah. most times. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you look at a lot of people on the left, it's, it is somewhat, I'm not even going to say somewhat, you know, Vince Everett Ellison, he said it. He's like, hey, it's a satanic lifestyle. It's a do as thou wilt lifestyle. Do whatever you want to do and do it's whatever okay. You want. If you are someone that believes in the word of God, we understand that there's some, there's some guidelines that we must live by. We understand that and we accept it. And the thing is, is that those that don't accept it, we still love you. That's right. We, we, we definitely, we still love you, but you have the right to do what you want to do. We just don't want what you want to do infringed upon us. The same the way you don't want us, you know, you know, pushing our beliefs on you. And I think that's the problem. The disconnect is you have one side that, that wants to tell the other side, hey, this is what we're doing. Y'all need to do it too and get over it. And you have another side saying, y'all can do that. We don't want to do it. And don't push it on us. Don't yeah. push it on our children. Yeah. We're not interested. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what it's really about. That's, that's, that's where we are, you know, at this point. Yeah. 
We should be able to decide. You shouldn't be able to just throw it in our faces and bully us to do it simply because popularity has decided that this is the new thing. This is the this is the new progressive because the world is progressive and things are not like they were yesterday. Times have changed, so this is the new thing. And we're going to deny the book of the Bible. We're going to deny the writings. We're going to deny where it came from. We're going to act as if the book of God is all about white supremacy and it was made up just to control black people. We're going to put every excuse behind our debauchery so mm -hmm. we can continue to live however the hell we want to live, which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. No, it doesn't. But when I was out out there like that and wanted to, you know, do those types of things. And I wanted to, you know, be out in the streets running around, so forth and so on. I didn't want to listen to correction either. I didn't want to listen to anyone. I, I, I honestly, I had to, you know, I had to bump my head a couple of times before I realized like, Hey, this, this ain't working. Yeah. We have been teaching people how to grow online. It's been absolutely amazing. We have three people who have been able to reach monetization in less than 30 days. Growing YouTube channels, some from zero people. We have one guy who had two subscribers before he started working with me. He started helping him. His views went up 4.8 million percent. We're super excited. If anybody ever want to grow on YouTube, you reach out to me with the word coach. It's not yeah. working. I need to try something else. Once I tried something else, life started to get better. But, you know, people can do 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 what you want to do. It's okay. Yeah, and then they say, if you come around me and you're trying to be upright and upstanding and you are serving the Lord, then they say, uh, that's bad vibes. Only want people with good, good vibes around me. <laughs> Don't tell me about how Barack Obama wasn't a good president because of this and other. Oh, no, good vibes only. Like, well, you black, I mean, bro. How can you say that? You black. Look at the policies. 23% unemployment rate during that time frame for the black community. Look at the policies. And the other thing, when you look at what actually works, what worked in the past still works today. Yeah. When you look at who the wealthiest people are in this nation, they're married people, men and women, married yeah. When you look at the children that are the most successful, they are children that are raised up in that type of union. We already know that, you know, when a kid is in a single parent led household, they're at risk. The stats are against them. Now, it's hard enough as it is just growing up as a kid. None of us get through this life unscathed. We all right. go through something. But man, when you find yourself in that situation, I mean, the kids, it's not a good thing. And honestly, that's why you have a lot of men, especially in our community, black men that did grow up in that situation. A lot of us have decided that we're not raising our kids like that. Yeah. A large amount have decided that we're not raising our kids. And as per the CDC, that's why you see now black men being some of the most involved fathers out there. Yeah. And even to this day, and they've done a study on this like every other year. And it's shown, and actually the numbers have gotten greater when you look at the black community when it comes to fathers because it's our community that was really devastated by the war on drugs and the crack epidemic in the 80s and it was our fathers that was either getting locked up killed or on drugs so it was our generation that grew up without dads more, most of the time it was us so now we're the ones that have kids and, and are raising and i know a lot of black fathers yourself myself i have friends that said hey this was my life my kids are not gonna go through this that's right and we That's made right. some changes. And when you look at you look at who has the money in this country, you realize that married couples, you only four percent of married couples are are at or below the poverty line. Those are facts. Numbers don't lie. The numbers don't lie. And yeah. when you look at black married couples, and they talk about you know the uh, the disparity within wealth, black married couples. The disparity, if there is one, it's minimal. So it's a no-brainer. So when you have someone like a Larry Elder saying, no, we need, we need strong families. When you have someone like Candace Owens saying, no, we need, we need strong families. We need to get men and women, black men and women back together. It only would help the community. That's and right. now think about that. If we, a full generation of black men and black women getting back together, marrying, raising their children, it wouldn't take but about a 10 to 15 year time span in those same communities where right now we have single parents, the crime rate would drop, the wealth would grow, 
the school system would get better because the parents would force the school system to get better. I mean, things would change immediately. And it would, honestly, I don't even think it would take 10 years. That's right. That's right. It would be quick. It would happen it would fast. Be quick. Very quick. But that just shows that we give a damn. I mean, but even if it's for selfish purposes. And selfish purposes, in my opinion, will be like self-preservation. That's when exactly you, what it is. Yeah, self-preservation. Like, I have my own family. I'm about to do what I need to do. So we, we're good. That's how it should be. That's why, <laughs> that's why Jordan B. Peterson always says, make your own bed. Before you start telling somebody else about their bed, make yours first. Mm-hmm. And once you make it, that's, that's just taking care of your own stuff. Take care of your own stuff. Take care of you, you first, your family, then your community, then outside of your community. But it starts within. And if you don't start within, then, bro, you short. But a lot of these people, man, they're not even making up their own bed. They're just faking like they care about their community. They're faking like they care about black people. And I'm talking about black people. They don't give a because mm-hmm. they support everything that's against us. They support everything that's bringing us down. They support everything that's digging in our pockets. They support everything that's killing us. They support everything that's making our men and women gay. They support, I mean, seriously. It's so much that goes along with this. And again, I will say that I still, I I don't care if you're gay or straight or whatever. I love you regardless. But you shouldn't just decide that I am who I am and I'm going to be this way simply because I feel like I'm this way. Nah, we all live to to make sure that we um, try to uphold God's glory. And if we can't uphold God's glory, then what are you doing? You telling me that I am this way because I'm this way and I'm going to stay this way, then I don't want to have anything to do with you at all. Do you, think ben Shapiro, do you think Ben Shapiro had a love, like really he wanted to like make love to Candace or something? No, nah, I don't think so. You don't think so? Nah. You I think, think it was so. all business? I, all I think spiritual? it was all business. I think it's just one of those things. You know, some people, some people have egos and, you know, he may have felt like, you know, his ego... His ego may have been bruised a little bit. And, you know, even in this Breakfast Club interview the other day when she came out and was like, he can't fire me. That was probably maybe the the straw that broke the camel's back where he's like, okay, we'll see. It's got to be, it's one of us. Yeah, because Boring is his best friend, one of his best friends. And and plus, he's also part owner of the company. So, yeah, he was like, oh, I can't fire you? All right, let's, let's, let's see if this is actually true. You know what I mean? I, I bet I can apply enough pressure to get you up out of here. And that's exactly what happened. He applied pressure. and But what you said earlier, though, I think this is what she wanted. I think it's what she wanted. I think mm-hmm. she was about ready. I think she see the lay of the land. I think she understands what she bring to the table. She know that she's bigger than being on a team of individuals with one way of thinking. She's independent-minded. You know, this is how she thinks. She move how she want to move. And she's already telling everybody to go to her website. She's telling everybody to go to her locals. She's already building that streamline toward her own thing. She says she's going to have her own podcast. So, yeah, she's already there. Yeah. I mean, personally, if she listens to this or if she wanted my little two cents, go do your own thing, sis. She has the name, the cachet that she could get the backing financially. I'm sure she has. I'm sure she's sitting on bread, but typically we don't like to put our own bread up. Yeah. Uh, but maybe you put it up as maybe some form of collateral or something, but go do your own thing. She has the cachet. She has the name. She has the name recognition to jump out there and do her own thing. And just as the Daily Wire signed her, she could go and sign some up and coming people and put them on and build a platform. She, she has can. the ability to do so. She most certainly can. And I want to say this to anybody that's listening, that if she wanted to, she don't even need cash to start. She already has the machine behind her. She already has people that know her. She got a following. She got 3 million people on YouTube, like 2 million on X on Twitter. And she can just start recording her own podcast starting today. And she will build up so, like, it will be crazy. It will be crazy and it will finance itself. Absolutely. And a lot of people don't understand that think that one of the reasons why she's connecting with other podcasts like Breakfast Club and Joe Budden Podcast is because she understands that they got this podcast thing on lock mm-hmm. and they understand how to get paid with it. Because these podcasts, bro, the money that they bring in is crazy. Yeah, and if she's money. having conversations with the right people, they can definitely set her on the right path to do it without like having all of these uh, extra 
people to pay and whatnot. So yeah, I'm with her 1000%, bro. Well, I look at it like this. If Don Lemon got offered the deal from Eli and X, if he got that deal, she should be able to get that and then some. She has way more people watching what she was doing on a day-to-day basis than that dude. So oh, absolutely. I could easily see her going independent, maybe signing some form of deal, you know, with X or something along those lines, very similar to what Tucker, Tucker did, very similar to what Don was going to do before he fumbled the bag with that interview. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, so yeah. I think the sky's the limit for her. And she's still a young person, bro. She's under 35 years old. She's under yeah. 40. Yeah. She's still a young person. And um, yeah. <laughs> now she may not want to do that because she does have two young children. And I would assume based on some of the things that she said that she'd like to have a few more kids. So when you're the boss, it does require for you to wear some additional hats other than just being talent. Um, but she could easily say, hey, we're going to go independent and hire someone to be CEO and kind of manage that whole operation while she just kind of you know, maintains that talent. There, there's ways to get around it and, and still have that form of uh, independence. But I think the sky's the limit for her, man. And I think I agree with you. She's hitting the different platforms out there. Now, Breakfast Club, they're not independent. They're on iHeartRadio, bro. They're not independent. Yeah. And I don't yeah. think the Joe Button podcast is independent. I think he was once upon a time, but he signed a deal, which is whatever. But I also think she's trying to broaden her horizons and hopes that Speaking to people, because, dude, did you read the comment section in the uh, in that Breakfast Club interview? No. Bro. No. There's a lot of people that eyes were wide open because they had never, uh, you, you know, how they had been told that she was the boogeyman for so long that people will close off and they're, they won't go do any research on their own. Right. There's a lot of people in that comment section was like, man, what she was saying made sense. I never really thought about things like that. And I think we have more black people today looking at starting to do a little more research and and really starting to be a little more open to what people on the right, people that would consider themselves conservatives, have to say. Because to be honest with you, I mean, black folks have been voting Democrat and been voting on liberal policies for over 60 years at this point. And not a whole lot has changed. As a matter of fact, it's actually gotten worse, progressively worse. On every decade, it's gotten progressively worse. When 90% of any race votes for a certain side vote for Democrats, then you automatically assume that it's the black party. So these young people who don't know a thing about politics automatically assume that, oh, 90% of us are voting in? That must be for us. That must be for us. But Lyndon B. Johnson came up with a plan that y'all know nothing about. Mm -hmm. That y'all don't know a daggone thing about and y'all don't care to. And if somebody was to teach you about it, you would call them racist for even bringing it up. Facts. You would call them a hater or a coon or an Uncle Tom for them even telling you about that plan. If somebody told you the truth about Martin Luther King, you would want to beat the brakes off of that dude or lady. But at the end of the day, somebody was talking about that, though. I didn't read the comment section of The Breakfast Club, but there was this young man, and I could not find a way to download his video. I don't know why, but I tried to download his video. But he was saying that, that's something that pissed him off because he looked at the comment section and he said all these people are buying into what Candace was saying and, and they are got their arms open like they want to embrace her and they don't realize that she's up to no good and she's just trying to run this way because they don't like her over there no more and blah, blah, blah. There's some simpletons out there. Sometimes you need to think more. Don't believe that she just, oh, conservatism isn't working for me, so I'm going to run back over here to the black people. No, it's not that. Like, sometimes we need to think a little more, man. Yeah, we need to think a little more critically. And even on The Breakfast Club, she told you straight up, hey, I am, I am a conservative. I am voting for Donald Trump. It's a no-brainer. Now, in that interview, I do wish when Charlemagne asked her, why are you voting for Donald Trump? I wish she would have clarified a little more. She didn't go into a whole lot of detail. Uh, and, I, and I get it. She was in the interview and she she spoke on one thing and then kind of another question got asked and then she kind of kept going. I wish she would have stayed there for a little bit and really went down uh, the list as to why. I wish she would have did that because some people, a lot of people on that platform needed to hear what she yeah. had to say as as to what policies Donald Trump implemented during that time frame. I wish she would have stayed there. That's if I if there is a critique, that's the one critique that I have is that. She didn't knock that that question out of the park for me. 
my critique on the whole interview is that it was a softball interview. It was Absolutely. a complete softball interview. There was uh, there was opportunities where she could have really dove in on who Biden really is. There was opportunities where she could have really dove in on um, the many things that that um, Donald Trump has done as president before. As a matter of fact, I want you to see something right quick, and I want you to just comment on it because a lot of people don't understand. A lot of black people don't understand the differences between. Um, what Trump has done for the country and what the other presidents has done for the country. And I really need for you to see this right here. I'm going to share this with you and you let me know what you think about this. Hold on one second. Okay, there we go. With all due respect to the man Abe Lincoln, all due respect, I'm going to end the argument once and for all why no other president has done more for Americans with black skin than Donald J. Trump. Let me talk to you. One, record low unemployment rate for Americans with black skin, which was recorded at 5.4%, according to data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Two, opportunity zones through the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which was signed by Trump in 2018. Three, funding for HBCUs through the Futures Act, which was signed by Trump in December 2019. That permanently funds HBCUs to the tune of $255 million annually. Four, criminal justice reform through the First Step Act, which was signed by Trump in December 2018. That single piece of legislation has freed 20,000 Americans with black skin to this day. And that's just some of the things he did while serving as president. Let's not forget the things he did well before he took office. Five, in 1966, while a student at Wharton, a 20-year-old Donald Trump helped start the MLK Jr. International Freedom Games. Six, in 1997, Trump donated office space to Jesse Jackson's civil rights group, the Rainbow Push Coalition, in order to give black folk a presence on Wall Street. Seven, in 1999, that same Jesse Jackson praised Trump for his lifetime commitment to helping the black community. And who can forget, after Jennifer Hudson's mother and brother were murdered back in 2008, Trump allowed Jay Hood and some members of her family to stay at the Trump International Hotel and Tower for free as a means to ensure their safety. And that's just a snippet of some of the things he's done. So stop getting into your feelings on me and find me evidence of another president, not named Abe Lincoln, who's done more for Americans with black skin. I'll wait. Yeah. He checked every box. Everything that I would say, he said. And that's where I was hoping that Candace would have gone yesterday. I know she knows the talking points. I just think it was, you know, a lot of times when you're in those interviews, especially when you get another question, you kind of can skip over some things. But, yeah, I've said that in a plethora of videos. And I've had conversations with people just out in the streets and at the gym. Same exact talking points. And the one big one, I know Charlemagne's always talking about generational wealth. And I was hoping that she would have hit him with how we increased our home ownership during that time frame in the black community. We're at 49.4%. That's the highest that number had been ever in the history of the United States. The number one way that people in America generate wealth is through their home. Hands down, that's the number one way that Americans generate wealth. So I wish she would have hit some of those talking points. First step back for sure. One of my friends that I played football with, Little League, you know, was got caught up in a situation, and he got out off of that first step back. So I know people that actually benefited from these policies, man. So, uh, And I benefited from these policies. I bought a home during, during the Trump administration. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, for me, that, that's the reason why. But I'm one of those kind of people. I'm, I'm a critical thinker. I'll go do some research. I'll, I'll go read a little bit. All this information, it's all public knowledge, you know. And the other thing, too, I wish she would have said, the Civil Rights Acts, and like really talked about every Civil Rights Act, and she wouldn't have, she didn't really have to go and touch each one, but she easily could have just said Republicans have voted for every Civil Rights Act that's ever been codified into law, in mass, to the tune of over eighty percent or more. Those are facts. I went and looked at the voter rolls. It's all public information. It's all public knowledge. You can go and look this up. I think. The problem is, is that we get told things. We watch the news and we just take whatever they tell us as the and gospel yeah. and, and opposed to saying, you know what, let <laughs> me go and do a little additional research. You got a lot of black folks out there didn't even know that Abraham Lincoln was a Republican. <laughs> didn't even know. And uh, you got a lot of black folks that don't know that the Republican Party was one of the last parties to 
you know, be created, one of the last big parties to be created, and it was the party of abolitionists. So, I mean, I think a lot of us, we are just ignorant. And I don't say that to denigrate. I just say that to say that we just don't know. Yep, we don't know because we don't want to know. Black America, that's why we don't know. There was a skit that Chris Rock did back in the day. He was like, man, black people love not to know. <laughs> black people <Yeah>. love. <laughs> you remember that? Yes. <laughs> we love not to know something. Like, I don't know that shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yo, black people. That's crazy you say that. I just watched that dad going, uh, you know, that was the, what, what is that? That's the difference between black, black people and the N-word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just watched that not too long ago, like two, three days ago. <laughs> It came across my feed. I don't know why it came across, but it did. And I watched. I was like, this dude was spot on. Dude, you realize that was like almost 30 years ago at this he point? He was ahead of his time, man. He was way ahead of his time. Good ahead of his time. He was ahead of his time, man. But most people <laughs> want to be – most people who, who are just lazy-minded – and I can speak on lazy-minded people because I am he and he is I. I've been that <laughs> all my daggone life, and I'm trying to get out of that today at 45 years old. On Monday, I'll be 46, guys. Praise yeah, so my birthday is on Monday, everybody. I'm going to be 46, so I'll probably take a week off of YouTube. <laughs> I don't know. But <laughs> – but uh, yeah, man, but black people love not to know. And I'm not even black people. Ignorant people love not to know. We mm -hmm. just love not to know. We don't like to work for something. We like for it to be handed to us. We just want to receive it. Like, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. I want to do bare minimum for the most. And that's just is what it is. And now nah, yeah. I don't want to work more. I want you to give me more money and I want to work less. That's why you got people like Bernie Sanders who will remain relevant because he knows how to race hustle. He knows how to go after the people who are lazy minded and want to work only 30 hour work weeks. <laughs> this still dude, get paid for 40. <laughs> and still get paid for 40. Like, come on, we are, aren't we lazy enough? I thought we were lazy enough. They like, nah, y'all not lazy enough. Y'all not, nope. Nah, man, we, we need to do better. We need people like you more because you're ex-military. You're very structured, very serious about how you operate. You're a family man, God-fearing man. And it's awesome to have people like you out here instructing us on the right way to move, bro. I really appreciate you, big dog. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Hey, yeah, thank I you didn't for start off like too. this. Huh? I didn't start off like this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but none of us do. None of us you know, do. None of us do. But I hope that... You know, being out here, you know, I know I ruffle, I ruffle some feathers from time to time. I try not to. I'm just, you know, telling you what I know and, and sometimes telling you what I think. Yeah. But, ah, man, before I go, man, I just do your own research. That's all I ask. Even though when, I, when I talk to the people, you know, that watch what I'm doing, uh, yes, I want to give you some facts. I want to give you some data, some, t some statistics. But I also want you to go fact check it. Go yeah. research for yourself. Don't yeah. just take what I'm saying. I'll say don't just take what Van is saying. For the gospel, listen to it and say, you know what? That sounds good. Okay, now let me go, let me go double check it. We all got one of these. Everybody does. We're all walking yes, around with computers in our pockets. Right we all pocket. are. You know, and, and information has never been freer than it is today in the history of mankind. We're literally walking around with full libraries and, and encyclopedias in our pockets. Look at that. You got a birthday wish already early. <laughs> yeah, man. No, you're absolutely right, bro. And we have no excuse. It's what, well, why is it saying, why is it saying we, none of you, have an excuse?